Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Brewer share. We're holding Mishnah Brewer Chelik Aleph, and we will be learning today in Mirza Hashem, Daf Chaf Gimel Amit Beis. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tzitzitz, and we pick up today on Chaf Gimel Amit Aleph near the bottom with a new simon, simon Yud Beis, Dvarim Hapoislim Bitzitzitz, various conditions which would render Tzitzitz to be puzzle, or by Gimel Seifim. And here we have three Seifim. Now, today we are going to be discussing the, uh, the the halachas that pertain to what happens when tzitzit strings rip. If you have your tzitzit strings and a string rips off, is that a problem? Is that not a problem? How much does, how long does the remaining piece have to be? How many strings have to rip off to render the tzitzit's puzzle? The differences between if the strings are both on one side of the knots or maybe they're on two different sides of the knots and so on and so forth. Now, before we begin, <clears throat> just a couple of basic uh, things that we have to keep in mind. We have learned that the shear of tzitzits, what is the required length of tzitzits? We learned that it is 12 goodlim. Right, twelve thumb breaths. That's how long the uh, tzitzits have to be, and we learned that that measurement of twelve goodlim is broken down into a ratio of one third should be the braided area, the knots and the coils of the tzitzits, and two thirds should be the loose strings. So that's what we know so far about the length of tzitzits. That was supposed to have 12 goodlim. Now, we also know that the tzitzits on each corner are made out of four strings that pass through the hole in the beged, and they are doubled, so that we have four strings coming out on one side, four strings coming out on the other side, for a total of eight. Now, it's not a total of eight strings. It's only four strings, but it's eight ends. So we have four strings, doubled over so that coming off of the corner, we count eight individual strings, but it's really just two ends of all four strings. So it's four strings, but since we doubled it over, we've got four ends and four ends. Now, everybody agrees that initially, when we make the tzitzits, we have to have four strings that are 12 goodlim long. Everybody agrees to that. Question is, what happens if the tzitzits tear? What happens if a string rips off so that now we certainly have one of the four strings which are less than 12 goodlim? If it was 12 goodlim to begin with, and now one string ripped off, so we definitely have one of the four strings that is not as long as we initially wanted it to be. Yet, we're going to see that as a, in a Bidyevit situation, if we had the proper length and then the string ripped, as long as we have a length of string remaining, which in halacha is called Kidei Aniva, a string that is long enough that you can make a loop, you can make a, a bow. And by that, the halacha means a slipknot. What's a slipknot? Well, everybody knows we take the string, we make a loop, we pass the string back through, and we pull it like that. Now we have a slip knot, and that knot can be undone simply by just pulling like this. It takes the slip knot out. So the halacha is, if we have a, a, a section of string remaining, which is kidei aniva, it's long enough to make a slip knot. Now we're going to see long enough to make a slip knot. Precisely what does that mean? The length of string that you need to make a slip knot is going to vary depending on how big you need the loop to be, right? The loop could be uh, this big, then you need a lot of string. Or the loop could be this big, then you need less string. So we're going to discuss that in the Shulchan Aruch. But if we have a length of string that's left, which is Kidei Aniva, then Bidyeved, that is still considered that the string is still there. <clears throat> it's another factor that we need to keep in mind. 
Now, another factor we have to keep in mind is we're going to see the Zavachlik is between the Rabbeinu Tam and the Rush. According to the Rush, all four strings could be ripped. As long as from all four strings you have left Kedei Aniva coming out of the braided area, so you have the whole braided area, and then coming out onto the Anaf, coming out onto the section of the loose strings, you have Kedei Aniva of all four strings, you're still okay. So Bidyevid, if all the strings ripped, but you have Kedei Aniva, you're okay. According to the Rabbeinu Tam, the Rabbeinu Tam is more machmer. Rabbeinu Tam holds that at least two of the four strings have to have the full length of Shneim Asar Gudlin. At least two of the strings have to have a full length of 12 thumb breaths. If the other two strings are ripped and you have Kedei Aniva left of the other two strings, that's okay. So we have the Spachlikist, Rabbeinu Tam, and the Rush. But again, According to everybody, if one of the strings is gone, if you lose one of the four strings to the extent that you don't even have Kedei Aniva left of that string, it's puzzle. Now, we're going to have to see what that means, that you don't have Kedei Aniva left of one string. And I'm now starting to get ahead of myself over here. But again, let's remember, we've got eight strings over here, but each one is only half of a string. The way we make our tzitzits, we're very careful so that when we make the knots, we know that all four strings coming out on one side are one end of the eight strings, and all four strings coming out on the other side are the other end. So if I rip off one string on one side, I'm sorry that the camera keeps on doing that. This is something I have to deal with. I keep pushing it off. Um, <clears throat> If one string rips off on one side completely, so you don't have Kedai Aniva, it doesn't matter, because you still have that whole string, the other end of that string is still on the other side of the catcher. So I still have Kedai Aniva of that string, it's just located on the other side of the catcher, so that would be okay. But everybody agrees, if, let, if you lose one string completely, so that you don't have a Kedai Aniva left of that string, Everybody agrees that that's puzzle because you must have four strings and then you only have three. Okay, now let's start to see these halachas inside. I apologize in advance for the state of my voice. <clears throat> so again, If all of the strings on one corner were torn off, so you've got eight ends over here. All of them got torn. They all got ripped. But However, all of them got ripped off, but you have left from all of them a length that is long enough to make a slipknot. A slipknot of what size? So the Mechavah specifies, he says, it has to be Kedei Anivas Kol Hachutim Hapsukim Biyachad. It has to be a length of string long enough so you can take the string, wrap it around all of the torn strings. So in our case, all eight strings tore. So you would need a length of string long enough so that you could take one, wrap it around the other seven and then make it into a slip knot. Okay? So that's what I just did over here. I don't know if the camera could pick it up, but I made a slip knot and first I wrapped around all seven other strings. Okay? So how much string did I need for that? I needed approximately that much string. And the Piskim seemed to say that it has to be two goodlin. So it's about that much string. If I have enough string left on all eight strings, that by each one there's a length long enough <clears throat> that I could wrap around the torn strings and make a slipknot, that's okay. Let's read it again in the Mechaber. 
If all of the strings on one corner were torn, however, and there remains from all eight strings, so that on each string you could make a slipknot. Of what size? That slipknot has to be able to go around all of the torn strings, wrapping them all all seven at one time, kosher. Then the tzitzes are still kosher. Why is it kosher? Because you still have all four strings. All four strings still have kedei aniva coming off of the gdil. So you still have all four strings. You're okay. But, v'emeloi nishar kedei aniva, if you do not have a kedei aniva left, and over here the Rama interjects, to explain what Kidea Niva means. And he says, Pirish, what's Kidea Niva? Well, if you're Marvis Sedra, you know what Kidea Niva means. He sends us to the Big Day Kahuna, where the Pusik discusses how the Choshen, the breastplate that the Kain Gadol wore in front of him, how was it attached to the Cheshev HaEphoid? How was it attached to the belt of the Ephoid? So the Pasuk says, V'yirkisu es ha'choshen. Targum v'ya'anvon. The targum of the word v'yirkisu is v'ya'anvon. How did they attach the choshen to the cheshev ha'ephoid? They had a psil t'cheles. They had like a rope of t'cheles. And it looped. It looped from a ring on the bottom of the choshen to a ring on the cheshev. So you see that what's aniva? Aniva is a loop. So, again, let's go back here. If all eight strings ripped and you don't have left Aniva and the Rama interjected Pirish V'yirkesos HaChoshen Targum via Anvon We turn to Chav Gimel HaBibayz Afilu Bechot Echot Even if only one of the strings does not have left kedei aniva, shenivsak kuloi, meaning the entire string ripped off, puzzle, it is puzzle. Now, if you stop here, you, you might be thinking that what the Mechaber just said is, even if one of the eight strings tore off completely so that you don't have kedei aniva left, it's puzzle. That's not true. Because remember what we said at the beginning, each one of the eight loose strings coming off of the ksharim at the end of the gedil is only half a string, right? Each string is dou- has been doubled over when it went through the hole in the beget. So if I tear off one of the eight completely all the way down to the kesher, somewhere in this anaf is still located the other half of that string. So the Mechaber explains here in the top line of Chukimel on the base. He says, Hilkach, therefore, Kevan, <coughs> Kevan, Chekal Echad Kafal since each string has been doubled over, Im Nifsiku Shnei Roshim, if two strings are ripped completely so that you don't have Kedai Aniva left, Puzzle, now that since it's a puzzle, because Shema Nifsak Chut Echad, because maybe those two strings are actually both halves of one string. And if both of them are ripped to the point where you don't have left Kedai Aniva, that means you lost one entire string. If you lost one entire string, now it's puzzle, because you don't have four strings, you have three strings. Okay, so again, to recap over here, what did the Mechaber say? The Mechaber started off and he said, let's say we have one corner of the tzitzitz and all eight strings were ripped off. All eight! But you have left on all of them, you have left Kedai Aniva. So the Mechaber is coming off of the rush and the Mechaber is pasketing over here, at least in this first opinion, what the Mechaber is saying is, according to the rush, even though Really, tzitzit strings are supposed to be 12 good little long. That's when you make the tzitzits. When you make the tzitzits, you need that length. But if they ripped afterwards, as long as you have kidea niva 
left of all four strings, you're okay. That's all you need, Bidi Evan. You need Kidei Aniva of all four strings. But if you lose one string completely, you're out of luck. Explains the Mechaber. What does it mean to lose a string completely? Well, since you have over here eight strings, but each one of the eight strings is really only half of a doubled over string. So if one string rips off completely on one side, doesn't matter. You still have somewhere in the other seven, you still have the other half of that string. So you still have Kidei Aniva. But if two strings rip off completely, if two of the eight rip off completely so that you have less than Kidei Aniva of two strings, oh, then you have a problem. Why? Because maybe that's the two halves of the same string. And now you don't have Kidei Aniva of that string at all. If you don't have Kidei Aniva of that string at all, then that string is gone. Then you only have three strings and your tzitzit's a puzzle. Now it gets a drop more complicated. Let's go further in the Mechaber. Says the Mechaber. <clears throat> Second line down, Chav Kibbal Abed Bey is in the middle of the line. Ulefi Masha Anu Noyegim. According to our Minig, where we are Noyeg, Ledaktek Be'es Asiyas HaTzitzitz. To be careful at the time that we make the Tzitzitz. Lo se simen ba'arba Roshim. To make a simen on four of the ends of the strings, on four of the strings, be'inyan, so that, shela oilam ha'arba roshim heim mitzad echad shela kesher, so that all of the strings on one side of the kesher are one side of the four strings. Ve'arba roshim mitzad acher, and the other four strings on the other side of the kesher are the other side of the string. What does this mean? I'll show you what this means. When we make tzitzis, here's what we generally do. Again, we start off by taking four strings, putting it through the baguette, end, and doubling it over. So let's ignore the, the gedil part of the tzitzis over here. Let's say I'm just starting to make these tzitzis. So I just took my four strings, and I just put it into the baguette, end, and now here's what I have. I have eight loose strings coming out, and now what am I going to do? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my, I'm going to start making my knots, right? You know what I do before I make my knots? I take four of the strings over here. Now again, I just doubled them over. So I know these four are one end and these four are the other end. I take four and I make a slip knot out of all four of them. Okay, see what I did now? These four have a slip knot in them. These four do not. So you know what I know now? I know that these four are one half of the four strings, and these four are the other half. Now I start making my tzitzis, okay? So I take my strings and I make a knot. Let's do that. It should be so simple. Okay. Okay, I just made a knot. Okay. Now, I have four strings coming out on one side of the knot without a slip knot. I have four strings coming out on the other side of the knot with a slip knot. So again, after I made my knots, I know that all four of these strings are... This is one end of the four original strings. And on the other side of the knot... These are the other ends of the four original strings. So now, let's say two strings rip off completely on one side of the knot. Is it possible that those are two ends of the same string? No, it's not possible. Every one of the four strings on this side of the knot is four different strings. They can't be two ends of the same string because one end is on this side of the knot, one end is on that side of the knot. Therefore, says the Mechaber, since in order for the tzitzitz to be puzzle, we have to lose one complete string to the extent that that string does not have left Kidei Aniva, in order for it to be, a, to be a problem, we need to lose 
one string on one side of the knot completely and another string on the other side of the knot. But if we lose two strings on the same side of the same side of the knot, even if we don't have Kedayaniva left of either one of those strings, we're okay. Because it's two different strings. They're not the same string. So each one of those strings has left Kedayaniva on the other side. Again, let's see it inside in the Mechaber. Top line, Chav Kibbal Amin Beis, Hilkach. <clears throat> Since in order for the tzitzit to be puzzle, you need to lose an entire string so that it doesn't have left Kedai Aniva. Kevach Kalecha Kofel Since each string is doubled through the Beged, in Nifsiku Shnei Roshim, if you lose two strings completely so that there isn't left Kedai Aniva, Puzzle, the tzitzit is a puzzle. When is that? Why? Because Shem and Nifsiku Chotecha. Because if you lose two of the eight, maybe both of them are, are the same string. It's two sides of the same string. And if you lost two strings to less than Kedaniva, maybe you lost an entire string. But when do you have to worry about that? Since we're careful when we make the tzitzits, lost a simon bar bar Russian to make that slip knot that I showed you on four of the strings. We make our tzitzits so that we know that on the two sides of the knot we're dealing with one end of the four strings, and on the other end of the knot, we're dealing with the other end of the four strings, and it's not possible to have one string coming off the same side of the knot. So then, if you lose two strings on one side of the knot, kosher, the tzitzes are still kosher, because there's certainly two different strings. If they're on one side of the knot, they are definitely two different strings. So on the other side of the knot, each one of those strings still has left Kedayaniva. So if you lose two of the six on the same side of the knot, you still have four complete strings because you only lost half of two of the four strings. Okay. Now, that's the Mechaber. Now we have to see the Mishkabur. Turn back to Chav Gimel Abed Aleph, Mishnah is cut in Aleph. The Mechaber began by giving us the case if all eight strings were torn off, but but from each one of the eight strings, you have Kedei Aniva left. Says the Mishnah Vinishtaya Behem, Pirish, what does this mean? Bechal Echad Minachut Nishar Lasais Aniva Shekarin Shleif. On each one of the strings, you have an amount of string remaining so that you can make this slipknot, which was called a shleif. And the slipknot is large enough that it could wrap around all of the other torn strings. Now, the Mechara's case is that all eight strings tore. So how big does the slipknot have to be? Each string has to have enough string left to make a slipknot to surround all all of the other seven strings, because they're all torn. However, says the Chavetz Chaim, let's say all eight strings did not tear. Let's say only two strings tore. How do we measure Kedai Aniva? Then, says the Mishkabura, the slipknot only has to be large enough to wrap around the torn strings. It does not have to be able to surround all of the strings. Bays, kosher, then the tzitzes are kosher. Vim hitter. Now, it's very nice that we're saying these tzitzes are kosher. So let's say you have a beged and you have tzitzes on it and you have a few strings torn off, but you know that you have kidei aniva. Let's say you had a pair of tzitzes and, like the Bechara's case, all eight strings were ripped off, but you have kidei aniva left, so it's kosher. Now, your beged gets a bunch of stains on it. So you want to make yourself a new talus cotton. So you figure, I'll untie the tzitzits and I'll put it on to a new beged. Could you use these bedieva dikit tzitzits to put them on a new beged? Says the Mishnah Bura, no. Vim hitter as a tzitzits, if you take these tzitzits off the beged, 
Also lit number talus acher. You cannot put this onto another talus cotton or onto another talus gadol. To have a kill because now you're making new tzitzits. Now you're trying to create lechatchila. This is not lechatchila. This is b'diavad. Va'afilu lo nifsak rak chut echad. Even if only one string tore off, so it's a hundred percent kosher. But the ein barka yishtem aser goodlin. But that string is not twelve goodlin long. If that string is not twelve goodlin long, then it's not lechatchila. You cannot use it to make a new talis. Ois cotton gimel. The Mechavah told us, if even one of the strings is nifsakuloi. Now, what does that mean? Remember, not one of the eight strings, one of the four strings. If one of the four strings is nifsakuloi, so that means, explained the Mechavah, it means that at least two of the eight strings were torn. According to our minig, it would have to be that one string was torn off of one side of the knot to less than Kidayaniva, and one string was torn off on the other side of the knot to less than Kidayaniva. Then the tzitzits are going to be puzzled because it's possible that that's two ends of the same string that would render the tzitzits puzzled. Says the Mishra is cut in Gimel, Shenifsakuloi. What does the Mechabra want to say when he says Nifsakuloi? That it was completely ripped. He doesn't mean one of the eight is completely ripped. He means one of the four. Ritzayin Alaymar. Shebishnei Roshav. On each end. Loi nishtayer kidei aniva. You don't have a kidei aniva left on either end of the same string. Av sheshara chuten o yushleven. Even though the other six strings are completely intact, it's possible because you lost one of the four strings. Vim nishtayer bishneim kidei aniva al yidei tziruf. Interesting case. What if... I lost one of the eight strings to less than Kidayaniva. And on the other side, I lost another of the eight strings to less than Kidayaniva. Now the problem is, it might be two sides of the same string. So now I might have one string that's less than Kidayaniva, so it's puzzle. But what if the amount that's left on each side, if I would add it together, it would be Kidayaniva. So that means that from that string, I still have less, left Kedayaniva. But I can't actually make a slip knot because, again, it, one string of the eight tore off on this side of the knot, one string of the eight tore off on this side of the knot. Now, let's say, just to use common measurements, let's say I need Shnei Goodlin. Let's say the share of Kedayaniva is two thumb breaths. And I have left one thumb breath on this side of the knot, one thumb breath on this side of the knot. Can I make a slip knot out of either one? No. But if I join them together, I have the share of Kedan Eva. Is that good? That's what the Mishnah Bura is pondering. So he says as follows. If you have the minimum share of Kedan Eva, through combining the two sides, we could have a question if that is efficacious or not. He says it is implied from the words of the Elia Rabba, that we should rule stringently. And now he takes to this Chumr to the next level. Interesting case. Let's say I lost one string to less than Kidayaniva on one side of the knot. And I lost another string out of the eight to less than Kidayaniva on the other side of the knot. So we're going to say that the tzitzis are puzzle. But why are they puzzle? We don't know for sure that each one of those strings is the other side of the same string. Maybe on one side of the knot, the string that tore is number one out of the four strings, and on the other side of the knot, the string that tore, is number two out of the four strings. I don't know for sure that these two strings are, are two sides of the same string. I know that it's Gor Yitachan. I know that there's a one in four chance that it is, but I don't know for sure that it is, unless I somehow marked each individual string. I don't know for sure that it's two ends of the, that it's one side of the same string, Two sides of the same string. 
How do I know for sure? So Zev Tachav Tzchayim. Maybe over here, we really have a Svek Sveka. If, again, I lost two strings out of the eight, but there are two different sides of the knot, and on each side I lost, I, I have less than a Kedah Niva left. If it's all the same string, then it's, it's a puzzle. If it's two different strings, that's it's, it's a kosher. So that's one suffolk. Now we'll add another suffolk. Let's say if I combine the amount that's left on each side of the knot, I have Kedah Niva. So that's another suffolk. So Lachar, we have a Svek Sveka. So the Mishnah says no. Even if we want to try and combine a second suffix, maybe it's not two sides of the same string. Maybe it's two different strings. And even if it's two sides of the same string, maybe the two little bits that are left are mitzarif to make kedai aniva and it's kosher. We should still be machmer. Why? Because it's not hard to get new tzitzits. The art says, Achaya mekel b'kegoin zeh, that Achaya was mekel in such a case. Venera, and the Chavetz Chaim says, it appears to him, dem yesh be'echad me'arashin k'de lano yvchud echad, if on one side you have a k'de aniva, but it's not the k'de aniva that the Mechaber described. It's not k'de aniva to go around all of the torn tzitzits. It's Kedah Aniva to go around one string. Now there are cheetahs that hold it. That's okay. So says the Mishnah if you throw that into the mix as well, The Mechavah said if we lose one string in its entirety, which means on both sides, puzzle and tzitzits are puzzle. Ayla Kaman Besif Gimel. Tells us we have to take a look to see Siv Gimel, which we'll see shortly. Ulakule Alma, everybody agrees in in Nifsak Chut Echad Meikaroi. Where we, all of the discussion that we've been having until now pertains to when strings are ripping in the part of the tzitzits where the loose strings are. But let's say the tzitzits rip at a different point. Let me pull get my towels cutting over here. <clears throat> What if the tzitzits rip, not over here where the loose tzitzits are? Let's say the tzitzits rip over here, where it's looped through the beged. Says the Mishnah as follows: Well, a kule alma im nifsak chut echad meikara. If one of the strings rip at its point of origination, that's what meikara means at its root, where it goes through the beged. The hainu b'makam chiburei b'knaf where it actually joins the Beged, the puzzle. Everybody agrees that that's puzzle. The reason it's puzzle is because if the tzitzit string rips over here, where it loops through the Beged, it's not considered connected to the Beged. The tzitzits have to be al kanfei big dayim. It's no longer considered to be al kanfei big dayim. It's not attached to the Beged anymore. Because of Ataz, the Taz writes, al Kain, because of this halacha, it would be proper for every Yerei Shamayim, that when they do the Bedika on their talus or on their tzitzits, they should make sure to look at the point where the tzitzits come off of the Beged, which is the point at which the tzitzits attach to the Beged, to make sure that there isn't a tear over there. So when I check my tzitzits, I always begin at that point. I always look over here. I look on both sides, make sure it's intact. Then I look at the gdil to see if there are any tears in the gdil. And then finally, I look at the loose tzitzits. Ice cut in hay. The Mechaber explained that in order for the tzitzits to be puzzle, you need to lose an entire one of the four strings. So, therefore, when we talk about a string being ripped down to the point where there isn't Kedai Aniva remaining, we don't mean one of the eight. We mean two of the eight, because we need to have torn off both sides of the same string in order for it to be possible. 
In order to be puzzled, we need two torn off so that on either side you don't have left Kidaniva. Avalimbe kosher. But if you have two strings ripped off, even let's say according to us, two strings are ripped off, one on one side of the kesher, one on the other side of the kesher. But on one side you have a kidaniva left, that's okay. Because even if it's two sides of the same string that are torn, on one side you still have kidaniva. Ice cotton love. Shema nifsak. But if two strings are ripped, you might have lost both sides of one string. What the Mechaber wants to say is, uh, Right now in the Mechaber, the Mechaber is not going according to our minig at this point in the Mechaber. At this point, the Mechaber is going according to somebody who went ahead and tied the tzitzit strings onto the beged, and he was not careful to maintain the separation of the strings between the two sides of the knot. So it's possible that from the four strings coming on one side of the knot, you actually have two sides of the same string. It's possible that they're two sides of the same string. Since he was not careful when he made the strings to keep them separate. However, according to our minig, where we do keep the two sides of the kesher separate, so we know these are one side of the four strings, these are the other side of the four strings. In that case, the Mechaber said, if you lose two strings on one side of the knot, you're still kosher, because you have the remnants of those strings on the other side of the knot. You have Kedah Niva on the other side of the knot. Says the Mishnah, is cut zayim shne roshim. Who adin says the Mishnah Bura? I feel you call a roshim nifsiku mitzad echad. So even if if all four strings on one side of the knot were completely torn off, less than kedai aniva. So on one side of the knots, you lost all four strings completely. It's still kosher. Ume arba roshim she mitzad asheni loy nishtayr bekal echad rak kedai aniva. So you have on one side of the knot you lost the strings all the way down to the knot. On the other side of the knot, all four strings were torn, but you have left Kedayaniva. It's still kosher, because each one of the four strings has Kedayaniva left. Gam Kain kosher. The Lainissa Ladeazu, because according to this opinion, which is the opinion of the Rush, the Tzitzits do not become puzzled, Raki Mechasar Chut Echad Bishter Roshav, unless one of the four strings is torn off to a point of less than Kedayaniva on both sides of the Kesher. Or Masha Kasav HaMechaber, and when the Mechaber writes, Shaharei Yesh Perosh HaSheni Yoyser Mekedayaniva, the words of the Mechaber are that in this case the Tzitzits are still are still kosher. Why? Because even though you lost the string completely on one side of the knot, on the other side of the knot, there's still a section remaining that's yoiser mikdeaniva, longer than the amount of string necessary to make a loop. Says the Mishnah Lavdafku. He doesn't mean that literally. You don't need more than kedaniva. You just need kedaniva. Now the Mishnah poses a shayla. Shayla. Chutayatzitzitz. Shenifsiku. If you have a tzitzit string that tore, and let's say it tore in a problematic fashion, let's say according to our minig, you lost one string on one side of the knot to less than kedaniva, and another string on the other side of the knot to less than kedaniva. So now your tzitzit's a puzzle. But what did you do? The chazar ukisharon. You took the torn section of the tzitzit string and you tied it back on. You tie it to the remaining string. You make it out, then you tie it on. Is that effective? Could you reattach the ripped piece? Says the Mishnah Berurah. The Achreinim reached the conclusion that the halachi is as follows. If before you made the tzitzits, you sat down to make tzitzits, and you had your four tzitzit strings to put through the baguette, and one of them ripped. And now it's not twelve, it's not gonna be long enough to make twelve goodlin after you make all the knots and the wines, etc. etc. In Mitkila Kaidim Sha'asa Tzitzitz Mehutin, Nifsiku Achutin, if the strings ripped before you made them into tzitzits, Ukisharon Bekesha Kayoma, 
So you knotted the strings back together using a Kesha Shal Kayoma. You used a fisherman's knot. You used a knot that's a strong knot that's going to stay tied together. And now you used those repaired strings in order to make tzitzitz. Kosher. It's kosher. Why? Because knotting the tzitzit strings together makes a chibur gomor. That is considered now one string. So no problem. So you went out, you bought your tzitzit strings from Mishkan Tchelis, and now you're going to tie them onto a begin. And one of the strings ripped and it's not long enough before you made the tzitzit. So you knotted it together. That's fine. Or, let's say after you made the tzitzits, and you made them perfectly bakashras. You made the tzitzits, you had beautiful tzitzits, they're 12 good long, everything is fine. But now it tore. Now one string tore off. Your tzitzits are still kosher, right? One string tore off on one side. So your tzitzits are completely kosher. And you want to tie it back on Tie it back on. You could tie it on. Let's say this string ripped off and it's less than Kidea Niva. So I took the torn part and I tied it back on with a Kesha Shakayama. No problem. The tits were kosher when the string ripped and the tits are still kosher now when you tied the string back on. Now, let's say an hour later, another string rips off on the other side of the Kesha. Oh, maybe that's the same tzitzit string that ripped previously. Now, is it okay? Says that Mr. Baruch, yeah, 100%. Yeah, kosher, it's still kosher. In all of these cases, the tzitzis are kosher, because when you made the tzitzis, the tzitzis were kosher, and indeed they never became possible. Avel, however, in Niskat Surachutin, if the tzitzis tore and they became shortened, in a fashion that would render the tzitzis possible. Kikoyin, for example, Shenifsiku Shne Russian, two Strings ripped, and you don't have a kedayaniva left. So here's your tzitzits. One string ripped off to a point of less than kedayaniva on one side of the kesher, and another string tipped, ripped off to a point of less than kedayaniva on the other side of the kesher. Now the tzitzits are puzzled. Why are they puzzled? Because maybe it's two sides of the same string, and maybe I lost one string completely. So right now the tzitzits are puzzled. Now you want to take the rip tzitzis and you want to tie them back on. That you can't do. You know why? Because when the tzitzis strings ripped off, the tzitzis became puzzle. Now you want to tie them back on and make it kosher? That's tasa v'loyman asoi. You have tzitzis that are puzzle and you're making them kosher, not by making tzitzis, by tying something back together. That's a problem of tasa v'loyman asoi. As the Mishnah says, or another case, or the case that we had before, where the tzitzit string ripped, where it passes through the beget. It ripped Meikarai at the hole, where it passes through the beget. It's a puzzle. Now you want to repair it and tie it back together. Certainly, if you made the tzitzit pipsul, because the tzitzit strings were not long enough when you actually tied them onto the baguette, it certainly is not going to be effective to tie it back on. Even if you put the strings in the baguette and you only made one set of coils and one knot, but you did it when the strings weren't long enough. You can't repair it now by tying a piece back on. Okay, I thought we might get a little bit further, but I'm not going to be able to go further now. So thank you so much for joining me for Liman Atari. This was Liman Atari. She'll be making a Gans Kal Yisrael. 
Rabbi Shem should say Yeshua's part, Yeshua's refuah's parnasa and shidduchim to all those in need, and we should be zeichet to see the BS called Tzedek, Ben Hera, Amen, Amen, be well.